CO2 regulation and flow. We're going to go over that in this video, so check it out. So in the last video, we covered CO2 sources. Now, once you have your CO2 source, we have to regulate that because most likely it comes with a high pressure tank, but most setups do. Now, in order to regulate that pressure, we use a regulator. As well as regulators, we have to also control the flow, and that's what we're going to go over in this video. But before we do that, if you're new here and you want to learn more about aquariums or discuss aquariums, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. Now, regulators are pretty straightforward. It regulates the PSI and there's different ways of regulating depending on the source of CO2 you are using. What's also most important is actually controlling the flow and we're going to talk a little about all those components in this video. So let's get to it. Now, first thing I'm going to mention is if you ever dealt with regulators, you're going to know that you can actually adjust the PSI on some regulators. If you see here, and I'll explain what this is later, this is a regulator made for brewing and I think brewing or in industry, but you can adjust this knob here and adjust how much PSI is coming out of the regulator. And your typical regulator that you buy from like say eBay or from uh, you know those bigger places, you have regulators already set. It's preset of the PSI of what's going to come out here. So don't go trying to adjust this knob here thinking that you can adjust the PSI and how much PSI is going out. Okay, you cannot do that. Don't do my mistake because that's what I did when I very first got one of these aquarium made CO2 regulators. I thought I could adjust it by moving this and I'm wondering why you see you can see even the marks here. This is a really old regular. You see marks here with uh, with the wrench. Yeah, you see that? So don't do that. It's already set for more than enough PSI to come out of a regular. It should be about 15 to 30 PSI's come out of regulators. More than enough for CO2 for aquariums. But let's quickly go really quickly over what a you know CO2 regulator that you use for pressurized CO2 for you know regular tanks and for paintball tanks. Like I said, it could either come in one or two meters, one that measures the PSI coming out of the regulator, out of the tank, and one of how much gas is left in the tank. Then you have most likely a solenoid. If you don't have one, then you could buy one separately. But I highly suggest you just for ease buy a regulator that has a solenoid already connected to it. It's just much easier. It's already there. Then you have the needle valve that comes out here. You adjust the needle valve to adjust how much bubbles are coming out of it. But that's your basic of a regulator itself. Okay, paintball regulators. Now, unfortunately, my current regulator is on tanks being used for the paintball one. But for example, you could get them with or without regulators, depending on the setup and stuff like that, from 50 to 100 bucks, depending on which brand you buy. I have uh, one of those Aqua Tech paintball regulators, which I don't really like, mainly because the needle valve is really fiddly, and I'm not the only one that has that problem. Tons of people I talk to have that same problem. Now, if you buy something like this right here, I have this thing here, which doesn't come with a solenoid, but it's basically your typical regulator. The needle valve is right here, and this is where you adjust the flow of, that, of the CO2 coming out of it. You have a single meter here that tells you how much CO2 is in the tank currently, and it goes out to a line right here, a CO2 line. Now, your typical CO2 regulator for your typical CO2 tank or cylinder comes in many varieties as well. You can buy them cheap or you can buy them expensive depending on where you want to buy them. On eBay, you could get them about $50, which is what I usually do. I like to piecemeal my, my setup based on saving some money. Okay, one thing to remember when you do buy one of these regulators on eBay that's made in China, it comes with solenoids, a lot of them do. This solenoid, I noticed, tends to get hot. The ones that are made in China. They're cheap, but it tends to get hot. It shouldn't cause a problem though it does sometimes get really hot that you might burn yourself so you have to be careful it does get that hot for example if you just buy the regulator yourself like I have one here uh, this does get hot so just be careful when you're dealing with this but if you're looking for top quality regulators then check out Greenleaf Aquariums for you the USA or check out CO2 Arts in the EU now the other place you can get regulators that will work for the aquarium hobby is from a brewery this one is actually, I think, a brewery regulator or just a typical regulator for a gas, for any gas. But some regulators are built mainly just for CO2. Some are built for O2, depending on the gas. Just make sure you, you know, get the right regulator if you decide to build one of these. This is what I did with this right here. I built this out. This was given to my friend, but I took all the pieces, built it together, put a meter on here, got the regulator here. If I want to put a second meter here, which runs and shows you how much gas is in the tank left, 
then I would unscrew this right here and put in this gauge here. But right now I tried to do that, but this was stuck. So I gotta figure a way to unloosen this. And just to show off, I guess, I also put in a line here and then went into a solenoid. I don't remember where I got this solenoid from, but it is a cheap solenoid. It went into a needle valve here, which another part I bought. And this comes out into the bubble counter like this, like so. And then it goes out to my tank. Okay, but yeah, you build one of these. Is it cheaper? In a way, it depends on how much you get the parts for and stuff like that. Now let's talk about bubble counters. Now this is an optional thing and I don't know why anyone would forgo this because it actually helps you measure how much CO2 you're putting in your tank. And that's usually how we figure out how much CO2 we're putting in our tank after we figured it out, after we dialed it in. I'm like, oh, okay, for this tank, I'm going to shoot two bubbles per second so that I know that I'm getting a little more higher CO2 levels in the tank. But how do we dial into that level? We'll talk about that in video, I believe number six, using CO2. First, my favorite and most common way is the bubble counter on the regulator itself. So we have here the regulator, and basically you have a bubble counter that screws into the regulator right here, right? You fill it up with water, and then you adjust your needle valve and dial in how many bubbles per second it goes. Now, inline bubble counters is another popular thing, and I like it, I don't like it, it really depends on the bubble counter itself. Let's take a look. Cheap and common is this plastic bubble counter here. You put this on the side of your tank, outside the side of your tank, and the CO2 hose from the regular comes into here. You know, it comes out into this longer piece here and then bubbles out, and then you count the bubbles that way, and then the CO2 comes out of here into your tank. Pretty simple, but the problem is, is with these plastic ones, I had some that leaked on me and I, I don't really like these and they, they're kind of clumsy. If you want to get really, really fancy, you can get one of these. Now these are glass inline bubble counters. And look how pretty, you know, China wrapped, wrapped this up for me. This is something I bought from a made in China thing. And this looks really pretty. It's very ADA-ish, okay? Let's talk about that, ADA-ish. So basically how this works is basically you put in the line coming in from the regulator here. You see this little knob here, that's where the bubble's gonna bubble out into here and then into your tank. Of course you need to fill this bubble counter here with water. So you just go ahead and do that before you hook it all up. But that's if you want to get fancy. Again, bubble counters are bubble counters. The whole purpose of it is the same. So in reality, you can actually make your own bubble counter. You take a jar and then you silicon some entry hose or stick into the jar itself. Make sure it goes into the water and the bubbles come out, fills the jar, and then the CO2 goes out from the jar into your tank. Old school way, we did it all the time, but you know, with the advent of new tech coming out and new products come out, it's really cheap just to buy one. So do it yourself unless you're really into that, go for it. Oh, and finally, one last thing, they actually have inline diffuser that has bubble counters in it. So you actually could count the bubbles once it gets to the actual inline or in-tank diffuser. And I have a picture up here, as you can see that you can buy from Amazon if you want to really get that crafty with it. And if you want to use an in-tank diffuser, which we'll cover in the next video. Now, needle valves are very important. Like I've already mentioned, needle valve controls the CO2 coming out of the regulator itself. And then use this to dial in how many bubbles per second it's coming out into the line, okay? So make sure you get a really good needle valve or a regular that has a really good needle valve. Look at the reviews on Amazon if you're going to buy one from Amazon because people will talk about the needle valve because a lot of people, is that's what you're going to use to dial in your CO2. So if they complain about it like the Aquatech that I have, then you're going to know about it. Now, solenoid, let's talk about solenoids really quick. And if you haven't seen it, I already touched base about it in here in this video. But basically, a solenoid is what shuts on and off the CO2 coming in from your regulator or out of your regulator. So you can control when it turns on and off during lights out or lights on in your tank. So let's talk really quick about you buy it separately like this. You buy it as a part that you could hook in later into your regulator. If you don't have one, you have to do some, you know, awesome plumbing skills to get this all hooked up and stuff but that's a possible way to do it if you didn't buy one with a regulator or you could buy an inline solenoid which you see here this is an inline solenoid as you can tell the put outputs here are the outputs and inputs are actually made for a hose a co2 hose so if we take a hose here you'll see you could just plug it in here and then tighten up the nut and again 
just a warning the stuff the solenoid that's made in china that you could get for pretty cheap like 15 bucks or something does and can get hot on you okay now i don't know what the ramification on it of causing a fire or anything or if it will but i never had a problem with it and i'm taking a big chance doing that but again the only problem i had with it was it was hot enough to for me to touch it and go out right, there's other stuff that you want to get with your co2 setup that actually pertains to the flow of co2 going to your tank so let's cover that really quick timer you need a timer you got to have a timer and a solenoid so make sure your co2 setup has a solenoid on your regulator you need that timer to shut it on and off when lights come on and when lights go out now this is a very convenient way to do it otherwise you're going to have to manually turn it on every day when you know before you go to work or you know turn it back off uh, when you go to bed and stuff like that it's just a pain you could just actually hook it all up and have it automatically done with a timer a simple timer just plug your solenoid into it and regulate when it turns on and off that in turn turns on and off your co2 check valves check valves are important if you don't know what a check valve is this is a check valve right here this is a check it's simple very cheap to buy and they have different types of check valves. they have this plastic ones but they also have these really cool metal ones and i believe they even have glass ones so how it basically works is basically air goes in one way including water and that's what this is for it's to block the water coming in from your tank to go into your solenoid or into your regular you don't want that happening so put this check valve right after the CO2 leaves your solenoid. And that's the perfect place to put it. If you are using an inline bubble counter, then you could put it before or after the bubble counter. I would put it before the bubble counter, before the CO2 gets to the bubble counter. So that way, any waters that might push back from the bubble counter itself won't go into your solenoid. So do it before it goes in the bubble counter and the bubble counter goes into the tank. Hose. Hose. Not. Ho. Now, you don't think this is important, but it actually is. This here is your typical aquarium air hose. You now, very flexible. We see it, we use it all the time. You see it in the aquarium hard. The problem with this is it's not built for pressure. So what you wanna do is get one of these polycarbonate hoses and um, trust me, it is worth it. Okay, it's a little more stiffer, but it can handle pressure and it, the hold on a connection, for example, a connection to say uh, your solenoid will hold it much more stiff okay this is much more stiff it'll hold more granularly you tighten it up and it'll hold the pressure in now a lot of people actually complain they're like hey my pressure isn't holding on my co2 setup there's a leak somewhere or my host keeps popping out of somewhere on the co2 setup that's because they're using something really soft like this use a polycarbonate hose and usually they, they come in many colors just make sure it's polycarbonate okay now another thing i'm going to talk about is ph control now i don't have a ph controller here but i'll show one on screen there is different brands out there and these are really really cool and very useful if you have the extra cash lying around just like a solenoid it turns off your co2 after it hits a certain ph level that you've set so what a ph controller does is you can set the ph controller to 6.5 and once your tank hits 6.5 it detects that boom it turns off the co2 basically it turns off the solenoid which turns off the co2 really cool tool if you have the extra money lying around to get one and one last little piece of tool that i really really love is a splitter this is a co2 splitter here basically these go out to your tank all right and this one is a two-way splitter so it goes out to two tanks now how this works is basically you take your regulator here and where you usually put in like say your line or your bubble counter you would put this in here basically you would screw this on like this right and if you need to there you could buy extensions that extend this up turn the needle valve on the regular itself all the way up and then turn these off and then adjust the bubble counter per the way I want it for the individual tanks itself so you have one source of co2 going to a splitter into two different tanks on two different bubble count ratings it's a really cool way to deliver co2 to multiple tanks Adapters. This is an adapter, and this is an adapter, I believe, for a 88 gram cartridge, 88 or 90 gram cartridge to a CO2 paintball tank. Okay. Basically, if I take this for example, this was actually built for, I believe, an 88 gram. But what I do is put the adapter on here, and suddenly it goes into and can fit into a paintball tank. 
all right? Just screw that on, make sure you have seals. Okay, well, what do they call the rubber seals? And make sure you have one here. And then you just screw this on into your CO2 tank. Okay, so there's tons of adapters, there's tons of tools out there to get your CO2 setup going. So if you need to know more about that stuff, go check it out on Google. Google it or whatever, or ask it in the Waterbox Facebook group. So hopefully you understand it's really not that complicated stuff. It's not rocket science. It's actually really easy. And once you get used to it, you'll be a pro at regulating the CO2 going in your tank. In the next video, we're going to talk about diffusing systems, which I think is a very important part, which a lot of people do skim on and I just don't understand it. But we will cover that in the next video. So stay tuned. And if you're new here and you want to see that video, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when that video comes out. And of course, as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments down below. Do me a huge favor, smash that like button, as well as share it where you can. And remember, I love you guys. Stay wet with your tanks, and I will see you in the next video.